Okay, welcome back. We're on to race number five. Now let's talk about the race and see what uh, way you guys want to go. Of course, I've got um, Daryl Marie and Darren Burrows with us, and we remind you about our ongoing Twitter interaction and our WhatsApp interaction. It's growing very nicely, and we thank you very much for all of the support that you continue to bring our way. We do really appreciate it. Okay, so jackpot, uh, let's get into this jackpot. The plan in this case is that number 10 picture the moment, top of the boards at 5 to 2, Darren Burrows. That's favourites, and uh, I want to just ask you to what extent um, do you want to play it? Short, long, which way are you going? Um, for me, Clyde, open, because my first choice is of Vernie Warrior. He's coming on the right way. But if this was a 1,200, I would be very confident. The fact that it's a 1,000 and he'll be running on very strongly at the finish, I'm not sure if he's going to get there in time. Uh, horses like Picture the Moment, also a better horse over 1,200. Um, it brings other horses into the race, like Bethel. He's done well over this trip. A modern magician should be competitive. And there are others with chances if you look into the trip. Okay, so you've got a handful from your perspective, Mr. Marie? I think I narrowed it down to three runners, Clyde. Numbers one, three, and ten. Um, modern magician, uh, his race depends on whether he settles in running. Because if he takes a hold of the bit and over races, he tends to find nothing in the latter stages. Mm. Uh, of Vernie Warrior, since he's been fitted with a tongue tie, he's strung three consistent races together. You have to respect him. And then picture the moment. Uh, obviously, Richard Faree, you will know him better in a race now, Clark, because mm. he rode him last month. I think he's better than that effort because he was misbehaving behind the pens and uh, working himself up. I think. Of the same rating, he must be a player over here. So I, I went all of 1, 3 and 10. Yeah, I noticed the form lines are totally dead in most cases. Yeah, so not an easy race. We're going to put up a jackpot for you guys. Here we go. This is what the boys have worked out. It comes from Daryl. He's gone 1, 3, 10 by 1 and 3 by Banker 1 by 1, 4, 5, 6, 7. Well, the top weights here, cruise control, cliff top, 62 and 61, respectively. Uh, one's a 113, the cruise control, the other one's a 110. It's a pinnacle stakes. And they do appear to be dominating the market. So we'll start with Darren Burrows there and tell you that cruise control, number one on the card, is uh, no slouch. He's 14 to 10. Cliff top can also switch it on if he wants to. He's 16 to 10. And then it really is 12 to 1 bar, the two of them. So it's an absolute two-horse race, I think, from a market and everyone else's opinion. But... I'll find out in a minute because I haven't asked Darren or Daryl about the race. And uh, let's get some insight as to what you like. Darren, you go first. Um, Clyde, I can't split the two of them. Uh, now, Cruise Control does hold Clifftop in the past. Uh, he gave him five kilos and he beat him. But then Clifftop was off form and Clifftop's peaking at the moment. So one and three have to go into all your play. A nice exactor. It'll probably pay four rand double your money. Yeah. I see cruise control had a bit of a dip at the uh, Cape flying. Yes. Um, didn't disgrace himself, but he's back in the Eastern Cape, Clyde. You can see as a gelding, he's unbeaten in the Eastern Cape. Right. Give me a prince came out and ran second in the Dardum, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Uh, like Darren touched on, Clyde, the one cruise control does hold Cliff Top, but Cliff Top wasn't at his best then. Okay. Uh, well, that's good to know. Prior to Clifftop's penultimate start, you would have been the first to admit that he's been very, very disappointing. But his latest mm -hmm. two starts suggest that the penny has now dropped okay. and he's a different horse. So I think he's going to get the cover from Cruise Control and possibly get the better of Cruise Control inside that final 50. All right. So he does appear to be a, a serious runner and Richard Faree does stay with Clifftop, of course. And uh, so it's a two-horse race. Which way are we going? This is a second jackpot opportunity that you got for you guys from both uh, of the team. Well, Daryl's sticking with his jackpot and he's going, as I uh, alluded to earlier, two-horse race. So it's, uh, we're going one and three by Banker, the one by one, four, five, six, seven, and then one, two, four, six, eight, eleven, and thirteen. Breeders Guineas time out Quebec away out Fairview Race Course. It's a 200,000 Rand race and it's of course run over the mile. 
And, um, well, the Courier does look like a very hard horse to beat here. The form lines worked out particularly well coming out of that um, Guineas uh, played Phillies, the previous Phillies Guineas, and uh, this is where Double Destiny and that other horse, um, Darryl, um, Darren Burning Moon, came out and won as well. So the form has been franked, and I'd like to know why this can't win. Uh, Clyde, she's a very speedy filly. Um, she tried. She earned her rating up the straight of a 1,200. Um, her last two starts, in her penultimate starts on the poly, she was, I think, 6 to 10 on. And she found absolutely nothing in the closing stages. And last time back on the turf over 14, she was weighted to win by at least five lengths. Okay. And she she overraced sl slightly, and um, the final 200, she was feeling pressure from all sides. Um, I know Double Destiny ran a head behind her, and she's four kilos worse off, but she's five lengths better over a mile. So for that reason, Ikoria going the mile for the first time, I'm concerned she'll overrace. I'm concerned she'll see out the trip. Um, for that reason, I'm going for Double Destiny who has proven herself over course and distance, and I think she'll track Ikoria's every move. Okay. So Ikoria is not an even money shot by the sounds of things, Daryl? I don't know if I should open my mouth, Clark, because I'm just going to confuse the viewers. No, well, let's hear. Tell us. I, think, get she, to learn. I think she's a pointer. Okay. <laughs> All right. Clutch is Barfatura out of its Silvano mare, yep. who won over 2,000 meters. Last time out, she was returning from a rest. I thought she was above herself, hence the reason for over-racing. I think this is the type of trip she's crying out for. And based on the weights and the ratings, she's 21 pounds or 10 and a half kilograms best in. Um, I expect her to win. Uh, so one of us is going to be right. <laughs> I'm sure. All right. So um, it's a boat race. And, um, well, when I say boat for Darren Ikoria Double Destiny, uh, Daryl says, no, nope, he's into Korea big time himself. So that's what the plan is. I think Darren Burroughs had a go at this one, and uh, he's quite keen on Double Destiny, who, by the way, at uh, 10 o'clock on a Friday morning was 3-1. to one. Okay, we're on to the final leg of the jackpot now. Get some sort of clarity as to what we're going to be doing in this event. And it's a handicap that has run over the 1,400 metres. Um, market this morning at 10 o'clock. Perfection was favourite at 16 to 10. Second choice, number one, Mableni, is trading at 5 to 1. And uh, four, Waiting for Summer, also at 5 to 1. You can get sixes and sevens, about a handful of others. Given the indication that there might be a few here that can win in a race like this, I'll go to Darren first to get his uh, assumption of the race, and then we'll come to Daryl. Um, Clyde, I like the source Perfection. Now, if it was a mile, I would say he's a good thing. The 14 is a bit sharp for him, but that good last run behind Kai's hope, he was staying on strongly at the finish. He's definitely going to rate hard to beat. Um, Mishla Beni, uh, last time out, just put a line through that effort, and his previous form is very consistent. And then waiting for Summer, a horse with a lot of ability, and he bounced back to winning ways last time out. He won very cozily. So six, one, and four in no particular order. Okay, so it's not necessarily race over perfection, although it is the first choice, Daryl? Yeah, Clyde, on paper, you'll look at his later starts and see second to Kaya's Hope, and you say, wow, what an effort. Yeah. Um, just take note, Kaya's Hope on that occasion, Keegan DeMello in the post-race interview said he wasn't quite himself, he was over-racing, right. and he's much better than that effort. Right. Um, fourth in that race was a horse rated 79. So based on that, I don't think he ran above his rating. Kaya's hope certainly he ran well below. Mm. Um, another interesting fact of there is that in his later start behind Kaya's hope, he didn't show the pace he had in his previous starts. He mm. got into that race very late. Um, I'm hoping they do push forward with him because he's got a lovely stride and he's an up-and-coming sort. So... Uh, health respect for him. Waiting for summer. Now, how, how strange is this game? Mm -hmm. uh, first run for his new owners, and he wins. Excellent. Uh, why excellent? Poor pre <laughs> what about the poor previous owners? Clark? Well, I mean, it's just uh, luck of the... That's, no, how, it that's how it goes, you know? Correct. Anyway, he was... Uh, 
he, he did have the blinkers removed on that occasion, Clyde, oh, okay. and he was ridden cold. I think right. they, that could have been the, the winning factor, and sure. now his confidence could be up. If he gets ridden cold again and adopts the same tactics, he'll be doing his best work late. Also got a slight question mark over the 1400, but it's not a strong, I mean, it's not a big field. And he does have a turn of foot based on his latest efforts. And the blinkers, what they're doing with the blinkers? They're staying, the with, staying, they're staying off, yeah. So Just tell me, I want to ask you about a horse called Twice to Heaven. Any sort of chance? I see yeah, if you like her, you have to have respect for Pam's princess. Uh, she is taking on uh, open company over here. Mm -hmm. mm, uh, not in my top three. Not in your top three. All right. Right, uh, what we're doing? We got uh, some information for you, and it's uh, an exacta. And the guys are want to go the following: at one, four, five, and six. Pretty much the top four in the market, but that's where they lead.